I couldn't let October go by without at least taking a trip down memory lane and re-experiencing a few of my favorite and not-so-favorite horror games. So I've compiled a list of a few horror games I've experienced. This is by no means a comprehensive list, but who really wants that anyway? My horror game journey began on the Atari VCS, better known as the Atari 2600. Although I am actually too young for the VCS to be my first console, by some quirk of inheritance, my gaming life began on the old wood-grained Atari machine. As far as horror goes, the game Haunted House was my first video game experience with horror. Although I'm at a loss to explain exactly what you were supposed to be doing in this game, I can say for sure that this game scared the shit out of a young MLG. Stepping forward by a console generation, the most horror horror game I can think of is Friday the 13th, The Game. This nonsensically difficult game absorbed countless hours of my young life, as I repeatedly failed to save the camp children from everyone's favorite hockey mask wearing serial killer. not necessarily a horror game. The Castlevania series are horror-themed, with skeletons, medusa heads, and various different horror creatures. The Belmonts had no shortage of monsters to kill with these. <laughs> Ghostbusters 2 is another horror-themed game, without actually being a horror game. Loosely based on the movie of the same name, Ghostbusters 2 puts the Ghostbusters up against ghosts and a lot of other crap I can't identify. This game kinda sucks. Stepping onto the PC for this one. While it's not a horror game, Doom dumps you in a world full of zombies and demons. One of the most influential games in history, I'd hate to leave it off a list like this. Jumping on to the PlayStation 1, we've made it to the genre-defining survival horror game Resident Evil. While goofy as hell, the three real Resident Evil games are renowned for a reason. Each game is memorable and influenced game development for decades. While Resident Evil may have been the most popular, Many people still believe Silent Hill is the superior. It presents a more supernatural horror theme, with the world growing ever more twisted as the game goes on. The Parasite Eve series takes a more RPG approach to the horror genre. You play as Aya Brian, NYPD officer, fighting against supernatural creatures. Recognizable locations give this game a more real feel. Parasite Eve 2 drags the game in a more direction similar to Resident Evil with unwieldy quests and a more real-time battle system. Overblood is a strange creature in itself. You play as Raz, a moron with memory loss, and his stupid-ass robot Peepo. There was an Overblood too, but I damn sure never played it. What's the matter? Can't you talk? Blood Omen, the Legacy of Kane, is not a horror game, but with horror themes. You play as Kane, an unwilling vampire who goes on a quest to murder some insane people. 
While the game is limited in terms of technology and design, it was the first game I played where they clearly used professional voice acting. Kane is a dickhead on a Shakespearean level. Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver is a sequel to Blood Omen Legacy of Cain. Confusing naming scheme aside, Soul Reaver represents one of the greatest leaps in design over a previous game and a single console generation. Soul Reaver makes a jump to 3D with no loading times, and a more coherent story, and is an even better example of good voice acting. You play as Raziel instead of Cain, a former vampire turned wraith on his quest for vengeance against Cain. Nightmare Creatures is what I imagine Dark Souls would be like if it were made for the PlayStation 1. Enough said. Castlevania Symphony of the Night, like its predecessors, is not a horror game, but has plenty of horror imagery. This is possibly the greatest game in the so-called Metroidvania genre. Resident Evil made a few significant leaps forward in the jump in console generations. On the Dreamcast, Resident Evil Code Veronica may have had the stupidest name, but it does carry the series forward. Dropping the 2D backgrounds, everything in the game is 3D. Claire Redfield from the second game returns to fight more zombies with some emo loser named Steve. Capcom, making an ill-advised switch to the GameCube with Resident Evil Remake and Resident Evil Zero, returned to the 3D characters on 2D backgrounds set up the previous games had used. This makes the games look actually quite exceptional in their day, but the limitations of the older technique do hold the games back a bit. Resident Evil 4 changed the game, literally. The camera shifts from cinematic angles to an over-the-shoulder view that gave the game a completely different feel and style. While Resident Evil stopped being true horror games with this installment, it does feature plenty of horror themes. Silent Hill had a couple of incredible installments in the early aughts. Silent Hill 2 may be the best survival horror game ever made. Once again, you take the journey into Silent Hill, this time playing as James, a man looking for his wife. The only problem is his wife is already dead, and he knows it. The game features clunky combat and the voice acting is rather odd, but it all seems to work. Silent Hill 3 is not quite as memorable as 2, but it is good in its own right. Silent Hill 4 changes to a more action-focused style. It's not as good, but, well, you know. It doesn't matter who I am. I'm here for you, James. See? I'm real. Haunting Ground is much less combat-focused than the other games on this list. 
You play as Fiona, a helpless teenager with her protective dog. The game focuses on puzzle solving. Fiona herself is nearly defenseless, but has to rely on avoiding contact with the game's few enemies while making her way through the mansion she's trapped in. Extermination is an early horror game on the PS2, and it shows. The voice acting is terrible, the controls are worse, and the whole thing really stinks of a freshman effort. Legacy of Cain, Blood Omen 2 is a bit of a clunky mess, but it's one I'm rather fond of. You return to playing as Cain as he kills other vampires to regain his powers and enslave humanity. Soul Reaver 2 is a smoother experience than Blood Omen 2. You return as Raziel on his continuous journey to avenge himself on Cain. Throughout the story, Raziel's perspective on the situation evolves and he begins to question his convictions. I knew what ominous hour this was in Nosgoth's history. For here was the event that had shaped my entire existence. Legacy of Cain Defiance is the final game in the Legacy of Cain series. You play as both Cain and Raziel as they fight against fate and the forces that drive it. The Thing acts as a sequel to the 1982 John Carpenter movie of the same name. Some people like this game. I have no idea why. My big brother. He was so sweet and kind. Fatal Frame is a game where you use a camera to fight ghosts. Some people like this game. I have no idea why. After our mother died, he was my only family. Devil May Cry is not a horror game, but has plenty of horror imagery. You play as Dante, a half demon, half human demon slayer on a journey to kill the demon lord Mundus. The game is fast, fluid, and fun. Devil May Cry 2 is not. Devil May Cry 3 is again. Well, that was my not quite so comprehensive list of our video games. I would have had more, but you know. I'm kinda lazy. It's in the name.